Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while since I filmed a video and to get back into it I'm doing one that I did this time last year that I really enjoyed. It was just a nice way to talk about a lot of theatre which I quite enjoy doing and so this is my Christmas theatre roundup of all the shows I've been able to see over the Christmas period. One was while I was still at uni and the other three are since coming home because I'm much closer to the West End when I'm at home so I like to get all my trips in over like Christmas, Easter and summer and then I have something to look forward to while I'm home. Uh, but the first show I saw was while I was still at uni which is Kiss Me Kate. The programme is unfortunately still at uni. But um, in Sheffield we're really fortunate to have some amazing theatre venues. So we've got the two main theatres, the Crucible and the Lyceum and every winter the Crucible puts on a winter musical and Kiss Me Kate was this year's and it was amazing. Um, the choreography is really cool, the show itself is really funny and Rebecca Locke was perfectly cast as Kate slash Lily because they kind of they do a show within a show. Another standout member of the Kiss Me Kate cast was Leighton Williams who opens act two with the song Too Darn Hot which has some of the coolest and slickest choreography I've seen in a while and it's such a good number in general and Leighton is about to go into the role of Jamie and everybody's talking about Jamie which I'm really excited about because he was really good in this and I've also seen in the two times that I've seen Jamie I've seen John who is the current Jamie and Luke who is the current alternate Jamie so gotta gotta complete the trio and see Leighton at some point. But yeah, I think Kiss Me Kate is a really good example of how amazing regional theatre can be and I was reading a Mark Shenton article earlier today, which I'll try and link if I can find it again, in the description about regional theatre in general, but also about Kiss Me Kate and he was saying how the show itself wouldn't have felt out of place at the National Theatre and uh, like how it would be pretty cool for it to transfer there and I think this show definitely deserves a more permanent home and whether that place be the National or somewhere else in the West End it'll be really cool to see it run a bit longer and have like more people go see it. The second show I saw was a couple of days after I got back from uni and it's a show I've been looking forward to for so long and the date we booked it would have actually been the penultimate performance but it got extended uh, through to March which now means that everyone should go see it. And that show is Company. Um, I am such a big fan of the soundtrack. I listen to it so much. Um, the one I listen to most is the 2007 Broadway revival. Um, there's others around. I think I listen to that one because it's the first one Spotify suggests. But I really hope they do a cast recording of this one because the main role for the New London production uh, of Bobby has been gender bent so it's now played by a woman. And I love Rosalie Craig's voice anyway and she's so suited to this role. I think Being Alive, sung by Rosalie Craig, is my favourite rendition of it and that is one of my favourite musical theatre songs anyway. So that's pretty high praise. It's also so funny. Uh, you've got songs like Not Getting Married which again is so funny and the set is genius. Um, it's a Bunny Christie set and I had to study Bunny Christie as part of my theatre A level, like not specifically but she had designed the Julius Caesar production that we did a, a heavy part of our coursework on. So I find it really obvious now whenever I see a Bunny Christie set but she is an amazing set designer and this, this particular set had lots of interlocking um, rooms that would create different flats and stuff and lots of neon colours. It was really cool, I really loved it. Uh, Patty Lapone's in it, who is a Broadway legend and she's amazing. I feel really lucky because whenever I see theatre bloggers talk about company they always say that someone's phone goes off during Patty Lapone's song so I feel quite lucky that Ladies at Lunch was completely uninterrupted for us. The Gilgood Theatre does have a lot of restricted view seats so even though these can be cheaper and I often go for restricted view seats because of that reason it's you do miss out on a lot of set um, with this production. 
So let that be a little warning. The third show I saw is one that I've seen three times. Uh, so it was my third time seeing it as well. Uh, and that is Hamilton. And once again, we somehow ended up buying two programs, um, which we did last time for the little one. And the first time we saw it, we bought the little one and the Broadway version of this. But they've now um, released the West End original cast version of the Blossy picture program as well. And we decided to buy the little one again because the cast change had happened recently. And then it's really cool as well because we saw it in the time that Ash was permanently Hamilton rather than alternate Hamilton before he left. So it's printed, Jamal doesn't appear in this version, it's just Ash as Hamilton. So that's pretty cool and they'll probably reprint again once Jamal returns and Carl takes over as alternate. So this one probably won't be around for that long. So that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, I, just, I spoke a lot about Hamilton the first time I saw it. I'll link to that video up there. So if you wanna know more about what I think about Hamilton, check that out because I could go on for 20 minutes again, but I already did that. The fourth and final show I saw was on New Year's Eve, which is something we do a lot. Um, we often see what shows are on as a matinee, go up and see them and then go come home to see the new year in. Um, and it seems to be something that theatres have caught on to because we often struggle to find shows with matinees on the day that New Year's Eve falls. And when we're looking this year, a lot of shows had added um, matinee shows. Uh, so like Company we saw had when we were up there, everybody's talking about Jamie had. So definitely look out for extra shows that, uh, that productions put on between Christmas and New Year because you may get to see it on a day that it's not always on and if you've got to fit it around plans that might work out better. Uh, but we wanted to see a show that we hadn't seen before, so the show we picked was Caroline or Change, which is on at the Playhouse Theatre, which I'd never actually been to before, and it's kind of hidden away, um, kind of behind Embankment Station. It's quite cool. Um, and Caroline or Change is such a quirky show. It's so powerful as well, but the... Um, the, the soundtrack, the characters, it's all a little bit quirky as well as being um, this powerful show with a big meaning about the civil rights movement. Um, Caroline is played by Sharon D. Clark, who you may have seen recently in Doctor Who as Grace, and she has such an amazing voice. She is a maid in the Deep South, I've forgotten exactly where it's set, um, but you kind of see her talking to these household appliances that she's using day in, day out, and they become real uh, characters. So the washing machine comes on stage and sings right at the beginning, and she blows bubbles whenever she's around. The The radio is like this little trio of singers, and they are amazing. And the dryer is like this slow, kind of quite scary <laughs> character. Um, Caroline hates the dryer, so that's, that's definitely portrayed in the way the dryer comes across. And yeah, there's a much bigger meaning behind it. There's this double sense of the word change. And it, it's definitely really cool. I, I don't really want to ruin it because it's so different. Um, but yeah, uh, the music's by the same guy as Fun Home, which I saw over summer. And you can definitely tell the similarities, even though the shows are completely opposite, but it's, it's still got that fun, like, kind of quirkiness as well as being really, really serious. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a good show. I can't remember how long that's running till now, but if you get a chance, I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, we sat in the dress circle, which we don't always sit in, and it gives you um, quite a good view, and you're a lot closer to the action. So there are all the shows I managed to see over Christmas in the last month of 2018. I have a few... Oh no, I only currently have one show lined up in 2019, um, which is Waitress, which I cannot wait to see. It's one of my all-time favourite soundtracks, and David Hunter is going to be in it, uh, and it's just going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, there's going to be much more theatre planned for 2019. Let me know what shows you're most looking forward to in 2019, because there is so much transferring this year. Uh, give this video a quick thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out my social network links, they'll be in the description down below, as long as a link to my blog, which I'm hoping to post a few things on in the next couple of weeks. 
And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, I may try and be more regular this year. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye!